Um, well, hi everybody in real life, and hi the internet. Um, so remember that the first step of meditation is to turn off your cell phone. And so uh, what I'm going to guide tonight is uh, I'm going to try guiding Jana. Uh, Jana's have been getting a shocking amount of media attention recently for something that has never gotten any media attention. Um, mostly thanks, I think, to Steve Zerfus, who some of you may know, he hangs out at the Olympic uh, sometimes, has been very, very good at um, getting publicity for the Jana's. So the Jana's are a, a series of eight sort of trance states, uh, absorptive meditative states. The jhanas actually are older than recorded history, meaning the oldest text that we have from, um, <clears throat> from the part of India where, where Buddhism arose. In, in the oldest text we have people already practicing the jhanas and have been for a while. So uh, these are uh, of unknown ancientness. And particularly lately in the West, there's been what one teacher I know calls the, the jhana wars. And the jhana wars are, are, while there's general agreement that there's eight, sometimes nine of these states, they go in sequence and they're very old, there's very little agreement about what these nine states actually are. So you'll find some teachers um, like Lee Brasington wrote a book on, on accessible jhanas. You'll find some teachers who talk about jhanas as something that's pretty accessible, something you can come home from work and go into. And the jhanas feel awesome. So the, the first jhana is talked about as being rapture and ecstasy and bliss. And uh, uh, as you go through the second and the third, it melts into just like the most delicious happiness. And the fourth one is talked about as equanimity. Feels to me more like inner peace. These great feelings. And there's other uh, other teachers, uh, I think probably Shyla Kathan would be on this team. I think Uba Kin would be on this team where uh, the jhanas are very hard to enter, that uh, you should be on retreat for weeks before it would be at all possible to enter a jhana. And I, I like to take the view of, of Buddhism that I call radical ecumenicalism, meaning as much as possible, I want to say everybody's right and, and here's why. And, and for the jhana thing, I, I think it is kind of correct to say everybody's right, that the jhanas are defined as like absorptive states with these uh, particular qualities. And you can get a pretty low absorption on these qualities sometimes, not that, without that much prep time. And to get real deep absorptions where your body is absent, uh, the, the Buddhist texts about the jhanas are written in, in the Pali, which is a dead language. And so some of the words are unclear. But the, the two words vitaka and vichara are present in the first jhana and not subsequently. And most teachers say that that means thinking and examining, although some teachers actually think it's about attention. So uh, in really deep jhana, your, your body should disappear. Um, all mental talk should disappear. Uh, the sense of time should be heavily distorted. And, and I, I would concede it's pretty unusual to like be able to make all thoughts stop and your body disappear like on your lunch break from work. But sometimes these like lower states might be a little bit accessible. So what I'm going to guide through tonight is a sit where we'll see how uh, how close we can how close we can get to creating some of the factors that, that might lead to jhana. We're just going to sit for 40 minutes. So actually falling into an absorption in 40 minutes is not a uh, Terrifically probable, <laughs> but but not truly impossible either. So I'll set a timer here, and we'll go ahead and come into our meditation postures. And the first thing we'll try to do is stabilize our attention. There are two kinds of... Uh, mental muscles you can use to stabilize the attention. The one that I basically always teach to beginners is come back, come back, come back. This involves basically narrowing your mind around your object, which for most practitioners I know is the breath. If we're trying to do the precursors to the first jhana, that kind of attention is probably going to backfire. So if you're pretty new to meditation, I actually would do that. 
if you have some uh, background in meditation, or if you just want to give it a shot, th this other way of focusing the attention is to start by completely relaxing the mind. Where one surprisingly effective trick to relaxing the mind is, is relaxing your head. And you should notice that the sense of space, the sense of the mind, maybe even the sense of self, feels smaller when you focus in on the breath and feels bigger when you just relax the mind, relax the head. So we'll take another minute to just relax as much as we can. Where the, the main thing that we care about is not focusing tightly, letting the mind be big. And then from this place of bigness, what you want to do is, is remain relaxed and just like care about your breath. Or uh, a verb might be enjoy your breath. And you'll probably find it pops into the center without any constricting of the mind, any constricting of attention. And if you get distracted, step one's going to be to just relax again. Let the mind, let the attention go nice and wide. And step two is going to be like the breath, enjoy the breath. The image I always use is that the breath is the product and I am like the model in the advertisement. You know, if you picture an advertisement, the model's like on the beach using the product. Just this like look of delight on their face, you know. Oh, this shampoo is giving me exactly the feeling I've always wanted. I try to uh, imagine feeling that way about the breath. It feels so good. And it's not hard for me to find that. It's not hard for me to make that true. So anything you notice about the breath that feels good is going to help it pop in the center. There's that cold feeling on the in-breath. To me feels really nice. The pause in between the breath feels so like, silent and peaceful. Breathing out can feel like releasing, letting go. So you can focus on how nice the breath feels. You, you can also use how nice it feels not to be doing other things. How luxurious it is to have 40 minutes to just sit here and feel your breath. A lot of things about your life have to be going pretty well for that to be possible. Or to focus on how nice it is not to be stuck in our usual default mode. Instead of listening to all the music passing by on the street, all those repetitive thoughts in your head, it can feel really nice to just focus on your breath. So whatever works to help you enjoy the breath, and we have to cause it to pop in the center of your attention. And we'll stay here for a little while.
And it moves when you get distracted of relaxing first. It helps put the mind in the right frame to refocus for what we're doing today. It's also a nice way to, to let go of the distraction. In the, you're letting go of everything, distraction included.
We're about to hear what we'll consider eight mindfulness bells. Those outside sounds being so helpful and reminding us to drop the inside sounds. It's so much easier to drop the outside ones. Each bell is a reminder to check. Are you focusing on the breath? If not, relax the mind. And then like the breath.
So, <clears throat> the next instruction I'll give, I would highly recommend you only follow if the breath attention in the way I was instructing it has been going pretty well. Uh, not exactly that jhana isn't for everybody or that it's harder and, and takes a little bit of concentration at least, uh, but it's also, it's it's not always the right time for that. Uh, Sometimes the mind's really letting you know <clears throat> it's not ready for that. It doesn't want to blast off. There's things it wants to show you, it wants you to look at, and so on. So if that was going pretty well with keeping the breath in the center by liking it, what I'd suggest next is to find something in your body that feels good. If anything jumps out, go there. If you don't find anything, <clears throat> the easiest place to find it is in your hands. And if your hands are clasped, uh, it's easier to unclasp them. And in the hands, there's often this like kind of delicious pulsing, like warm or buzzy sensation. So we'll look for anything in the body that, that feels good. And trying to focus on that thing will strangle it. <clears throat> it's like if you have a raindrop fall in your hand and you close your fist to squeeze it. So it's why I was prepping us with this different sort of way of putting the breath in the center. If you do find some good feeling <clears throat> that seems reasonably stable, the verb you're looking for is something like enjoy it, dig it, marinate in it. So only in the case that the breath attention was going pretty well and this feels like a good thing to do. Find that pleasant sensation and see if it's reasonably stable. <clears throat> if it is, see if you can enjoy it more. If it just dissipates, find another one. If you're forgetting what you're doing, go back to the breath until it feels more stable. One other thing that can happen is you focus on the pleasant sensation and it causes like an upwelling of, of what's called PT. Uh, PT is usually translated with words like rapture and ecstasy and bliss. People sometimes talk about it like electricity. It's a, it's a positive feeling and it, it's kind of a lot. And so the, the first obstacle is going to be getting your attention reasonably stable in this relaxed way of caring about it, caring about the object. Second obstacle is going to be finding a pleasant sensation that's stable enough. The third's going to be just enjoying it. Any kind of grabbing onto it, trying to make something happen is, is going to destroy it. <clears throat> The, the, the two big tricks to jhana practice I've found are using enjoyment and not attention and not trying to get jhana. And the moment you're trying to make something cool happen, uh, we can just be certain that it won't. So one way I like to do that is taking the fairly reasonable presumption that there's just no chance of anything cool happening. It's just, it's too short, it's late at night. <clears throat> All I'm gonna do is just sit here and enjoy my pleasant sensation. <clears throat> and and so if you do find the sensation and it, it stays stable and you're able to enjoy it, uh, the last major obstacle <clears throat> we might work with tonight is, is this PT, that, that often when you can enjoy it stably, it starts spreading and getting kind of intense. And, and what you want to do with the PT is basically just ignore it. Just keep enjoying yourself. Try to relax. It, it's hard. It may knock you out of it if you get it. But the idea is to just come back and, and as much as you can, try not to care about it. Not to care about, <clears throat> not 
not to care about any intense sensations that come up. Uh, <clears throat> ancient Buddhist texts talk about all sorts of different possible objects for jhana. So if, if you're having some luck with nice body sensations, keep going. Another potentially easy one is, is feelings of love or feelings of metta. The, the last retreat that I was a student on, they're trying to get you to feel this love so you could do jhana. And I, I walked by my car in the parking lot and I saw the car seat that my two-year-old sits in. And just like uh, thinking about her, the love just exploded out. And then the, the jhana practice got easy. So if you're pretty stable <clears throat> on your attention and you're not finding anything stably pleasant in the body, you can try creating it. That kind of wholesome love is what you're looking for. The thing you feel for like, uh, commonly for kids, for pets, maybe for grandparents. It's kind of uncomplicated, wholesome feeling some people might trigger in you. If it's easy to bring that up, it's fine to use that as well.
Hi everybody, <coughs> welcome back. <laughs>